Hey guys, Sean Pruitt here. So I have a lot of people asking me about uh, where oil prices are going, crude oil prices, um, what's going on with the war on Iran, uh, what does Donald Trump think about this thing? Uh, I wanted to, um, Donald Trump just went live uh, moments ago and he is discussing uh, the effects of uh, the, the death of Qasem Salami. We uh, recently attacked him and killed him and uh, a lot of people have questions, and so they're interviewing him um, on uh, live today. And I wanted to go ahead and give you uh, a, a, a brief history of who this man is. Uh, Qasem Salami, the head of Iran's elite uh, Quds military force, and one of the most powerful figures in the Islamic Republic, was killed early Friday in an airstrike in Baghdad. A senior, a senior Iranian commander threatened at Salami's funeral to set ablaze America's supporters in the region, but Iran's foreign minister told CBS News the response would be proportionate and against legitimate targets, okay? And so I want to go ahead and um, uh, let's listen in what Donald Trump has to say, and then I'm going to go in my take on what I think it, how it's going to affect oil prices and, and, and kind of what's going on in the oil world. Supposed to be outside of his own country, he was, so right there. Uh, but that's, in a way, the least of it. We had an attack very recently that he was in charge of, where we had people horribly wounded, one dead. In fact, the number now, as of this morning, I believe, is two dead. And uh, that was his. He was uh, traveling with the head of Hezbollah. Uh, they weren't there to discuss a vacation. They weren't there to go to a nice resort someplace in Baghdad. They were there to discuss bad business. And we saved a lot of lives by terminating his life. A lot of lives are saved. They were planning something, and uh, you're going to be hearing about it, or at least uh, various people in Congress are going to be hearing about it tomorrow. Our Secretary of State covered it very well a little while ago. I saw him. I saw his news conference, Mike. And uh, if you want to mention a couple of things in addition to what I've just said, but we had tremendous information. We've been following him for a long time, and we followed his path for those three days, and they were not good stops. We didn't like where he was stopping. They were not good stops. We saved a lot of lives. Mike? Mr. President, not only that, we had deep intelligence indicating there was active plotting that put American lives at risk. And I'm confident, I think the President's confident, too, that the actions that the President took saved American lives, saved lives of Iraqi Muslims as well. Uh, it was the right thing to do, and uh, our Department of Defense did an excellent job executing the mission. And, and as you know, he killed at least 608 Americans, but the number is much higher than that. He's also very much roadside bombs and all of the horrible explosives that you see. He was a big believer and sent them everywhere. Uh, he was somebody that uh, we did ourselves, that we did a lot of countries a big favor. And I've been, I've been hearing from countries, uh, they were extremely happy with what we did. And if you look inside Iran itself, there were plenty of those leaders that were happy because they feared him and didn't like him in many cases. Could, could you also clear up, Mr. President, whether Iranian cultural sites would be on any future targets? Well, as I said yesterday, it was very interesting. Uh, they're allowed to kill our people. They're allowed to maim our people. They're allowed to blow up everything that we have, and there's nothing that stops them. And we are according to uh, various laws, uh, supposed to uh, be very careful with their cultural heritage. And you know what? If that's what the law is, I, w I like to obey the law. But think of it. They kill our people. They blow up our people. And then we have to be very gentle with their cultural institutions. But I'm OK with it. It's OK with me. I will say this. If Iran does anything <coughs> that they shouldn't be doing, they're going to be suffering the consequences. And Trump is setting the stage for an attack, bottom line, okay? He's preparing Americans. He's saying, hey, these people are evil, and we're going to retaliate if they attack us anymore. He's setting the groundwork for a military attack on Iran, okay? And so this is exactly what Bush did. This is what Obama did. This is what we do. And this is exactly what Saudi Arabia, or sorry, Iran is doing for their people. They're prepping all their minds. They want blood. Iran wants blood. They're crying on the streets for blood, for vengeance. And uh, one of the top guys for uh, Iran, one of the princes or whatever, anyways, uh, I don't know their names, told the uh, two daughters of Qasem Salami 
uh, uh, his two daughters said, we are going to have vengeance. Don't you worry. Okay. And so Donald Trump is preparing Americans. Hey, we might have to go to war with these guys. They're evil people. And Iran is doing the same thing. Okay. So we're at war here and it's only going to get worse. Very strongly. All right, Steve. Well, don't forget, uh, in our case, it was retaliation because they were there first. They killed and look, I don't have to talk about him for 18 to 20 years. He was a monster. But just in the very short period of time, two people dead, people badly injured. And then before that, there were other attacks. And look at what he was planning. So that'll be discussed tomorrow morning. Right now, it's classified. And that'll be discussed tomorrow with Mike Pompeo and the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Is this the U.S. prepared for an Iranian attack? We're prepared. We're totally prepared. And likewise, we're prepared to attack if we have to, as retribution. Mr. President, if, if Iran's leader said that any uh, response to the Soleimani uh, killing would be, quote, proportional, uh, what would the United States do in the event of any Iranian response? <laughs> so, again, John, if you look at what's going on, ours was a, an attack based on what they did. We weren't the first one out. He killed an American. Now two people are dead from the same attack, and some people very badly wounded. And that was one of his smaller endeavors. You look over his past. His past, he's been called a monster, and he was a monster. And he's no longer a monster. He's dead. And that's a good thing for a lot of countries. And he was planning a very big attack and a very bad attack for us and other people. And we stopped him. And I don't think anybody can complain about it. I don't hear too many people other than politicians who are trying to win the presidency. Those are the ones that are complaining, but I don't hear anybody else complaining. Go ahead. So he didn't really answer the question. I mean, what is proportionate to um, the attack that when we killed uh, Mr. Salami? Um, what is proportionate for Iran? Well, what he's saying is, is that these guys are, are, they don't think in the same way we think, okay? He, 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 he answered it with the, with, with, by saying, hey, we attacked directly, okay? Uh, it was it was Ben Salami that attacked the uh, the local embassy and killed two Americans, and so we attacked the very person that attacked the embassy. Okay, so he was basically saying, "Hey, this was in in correlation. It was it was uh, deemed necessary." Okay, and uh, what was, what was the the thing that they said here? Uh, threatened at a funeral, set ablaze America's supporters in the region, but Iran's foreign minister told CBS the response would be proportionate. And so Donald Trump is saying, hey, this was proportionate what, what we did, but they're not proportionate. They're going to do whatever they want to do. It's not going to be proportionate based upon one man's death. It's going to be, um, they, don't, they don't fight clean, they fight dirty. Um, I wanted to go... <clears throat> Uh, th this is a, a, a video of just how soldiers and equipment left North Carolina for Kuwait, adding to the hundreds who left there earlier so this week. So we're sending troops in. Iraq, too, Shiite Muslims have marched in funeral processions to show their grief. Just look at the how much prime minister has man. declared three days of national mourning. Mourning and anger these guys are in the air as the funeral procession for Iran's him. top general, Qasim Soleimani, and Iraqi commander Abu Mahdi al-Muhandis arrives at the holy shrine in Najaf. Thousands have come to pay their respects here in Iraq. I mean, they're not going to let this go. They love this man. He was a top general. They loved him. The top officials of Iran um, made it very clear, we're going to retaliate. We're going to, I mean, we all know that they're going to do something else. I mean, they've already attacked our, our embassy and killed two innocent Americans. With, and, and Trump made it very clear they're going to be discussing with Mike Pompeo and his top generals what they were planning to do. That they, he, they stopped the ultimate plan. Okay, That was the beginning of what they were planning, but they stopped it from happening. So they're going to discuss what they were planning. But I'm telling you, they hate America, and they are retaliating. I want to hear what this guy has to say. Give you a little the Middle East of is a region of alliances divided between two big military powers, the United States and Iran. Now, the United States has military bases across the Middle East, and its allies include Israel, Jordan, 
Saudi Arabia and many of the Gulf states. Iran, for its part, is allied with President Assad's regime in Syria, Hezbollah in Lebanon, the Houthi forces in Yemen and elements of the Iraqi administration. Iraq also has strategic partnerships with China and Russia and some limited ties with Qatar and Oman. Four decades ago, Iraq invaded Iran. Half a million people on both sides were killed and a truce was eventually agreed in 1988. So 1980 to 88, Iran and the Iraq war started. And I wanted to show you guys oil prices. Uh, so if you look here, 1980, uh, right here, 1979, you can see oil prices spike from 1979 to 1980 and then the war started to subside uh to 1985 okay and and then of course the war stopped and they came to a truth to 1988 okay and so you see oil prices they spiked up to 125 dollars a barrel in 1980 and then they dropped down to uh uh 30 something dollars a barrel 86 and um 88 they came to a truce and so that's when oil prices uh, 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 started to stabilize, okay? And so obviously war causes oil prices to go up. And uh, let's listen in further. Iran retook most of its lost territory. The war triggered Iran's more expansive foreign policy that we see today and its pursuit of nuclear weapons. And it built the reputations of some senior commanders, including Qasem Soleimani. In the 1990s and early 2000s, the U.S. fought two wars against Iraq and finally captured Saddam Hussein in 2003. So the the war against uh, with with the Bush in office, if you look at the uh, prices, so they they captured uh, Saddam Hussein in 1993. Okay, and so if you look here, uh, this is when. This is when you see these 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 escalation oil prices. This is when the heat of the battle was. I think this is when uh, uh, Saddam Hussein set uh, the the crude on fire, if you remember any of that. And so we caught him in 1993. Okay, which brought peace uh, to the Middle East for a short time, and of course, oil prices go up. So an escalation of war causes oil prices to go up. Okay, but what makes this different? What makes this different? The reason why we're not seeing these major spikes like we used to see them back in the 80s and 90s and in 2008. I mean, if, if you look in 2008, oil prices uh, right here were $150 a barrel, okay? Um, the reason why we don't see those prices anymore is because we're producing a lot of shell. Shell is, um, shell has been, uh, preventing that huge escalation because we have security that, hey, if Saudi Arabia or any country over the Middle East has an issue or they cut us off from oil, kind of like the oil embargo uh, back in the 60s, I think, 70s, and it caused oil prices to triple overnight. That doesn't happen anymore because we have enough energy to go around for America, okay? So it stabilized the world oil, okay? But it, this is different, okay? Over the last several years, we've been steady around 50-something dollars a barrel on average. And uh, the reason why it's been stable is because we've had a lot of shell output. But you can't make money at 50-something dollars a barrel in shell, okay? In, 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 in conventional oil plays, the areas I focus in, you can make, you can make a lot of money at conventional oil, okay? Um, we, we, in, in, and so bottom line... What makes this different, this war different, is that not only is it going to cause oil prices to go up, as historically this has happened, but we don't have enough uh, shell development going on right now to maintain the output. The output, we went from producing 6 million a day uh, to 16 million a day. Let's see here if, if we have a chart uh, here, U.S. crude oil production. Okay, so you look at U.S. crude oil production. Um, we were producing at 1.9 million plus with conventional oil, but we ran out of conventional oil. And so we, 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 those, those big oil fines are, were, were, were drastically dropping uh, because you, you only have so much room to drill. So by 2005, we're down to three something million a day. Uh, so we averaged about 5 million a day from 05 to 2010. 
But when we really started to jump 2012, this is when we started drilling the, the heck out of the, the, the Bakken shell. So shell caused this huge incline. So we went from 5 million a day upwards of 13 million a day, okay? And so that's an additional 7 million barrels a day. So we went, our best was 9 million back in 83 to uh, 12 million. And so uh, that, that's an additional 7 million just from Shell, okay? But the thing is the decline curve in Shell is massive. See, this, you see a conventional oil play, you see the decline curve. We go from 8 million in 1985 down to uh, 5 million uh, in 2007, okay? Conventional decline curve is very slow in comparison to Shell. Shell is a very tight, uh, low porosity formation, okay? And sorry, I, I noticed that the video, I have my face covering the chart and you can't even see what I was talking about. But bottom line, Shell decline curve is much faster, okay? And so you have to drill a lot of Shell in order to maintain that additional 7 million a day. Well, Shell's not being funded right now. All of the major investment banks are not funding Shell right now. Why? Because you can't make money at $50 a barrel. And so if oil prices go back up to $100 a barrel, which I very, I, I think we're, 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 I think it's going to happen. Um, right now, oil prices are um, $63 a barrel right now. Um, and, and Brent crude is $68.25. But bottom line, uh, so we were at 70 just yesterday, but it's fluctuating. If we go to war with Iran, you're going to see $100 a barrel easily, okay? Um, but uh, the, the, the reason why this is different is because you're not going to have all the money being dumped in the shell again like they did. They've already learned their lesson, okay? So there's a lot of people saying, well, shell is going to prevent oil prices from skyrocketing, okay? Um, back up to $150 a barrel where they were in 08. I agree with that. But with that said, who is going to, when oil prices go up to $100 a barrel, who's going to invest in Shell? Yeah, you're going to have small investments, but who, who, where are those investment bankers that invest all that money? Where are those uh, 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 funds that invest a massive amount of money in Shell? Where are the investors that are investing in British Petroleum and Chevron on the stock market? See, they have, cur they, they have cut back on investing in those resources because they lost their tail over the last several years because oil prices were 50 something dollars a barrel so what i believe what you're going to see is a massive decline in shell because it's it's a it's a fast declining uh resource and you're going to see um, um retaliation from iran because they promised i mean when you when you when 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 somebody when when somebody's dead and you go up to their daughters hey i'm going to avenge the death of your father you don't you don't mess around with words like that when an entire country is crying uh, in mourning one man and they are crying for vengeance kind of like we did when 9/11 when they attacked 9/11 Bush sent in troops and in it was easy to send in troops when you have all of America backing you because you want vengeance you're angry you're upset about the loss of uh, six thousand people in 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 the twin towers well these people are are crying as if their own family has died and so um they love their 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 general so bottom line they're going to retaliate and america is ready to retaliate as well it's going to spark a war in the middle east and um even if nothing happens um oil prices are going going to continue to remain around 60 70 dollars a barrel for a time because quite simply you're not going to see enough money being dumped into shell again and so with shell decline, you're going to see oil prices go up naturally, okay? Um, and so even if we don't have a war, uh, I think oil prices are stable, and I think they're going to go up with the decline of shell. And if you see a war, uh, if, if Middle East does something stupid um, and, and America retaliates, then you're going to see oil prices escalate to 100 something dollars a barrel. Who knows? Maybe we'll see what they did in 2008, see them at $150 a barrel again. Anyways, I'm Sean Pruitt, president of Kingdom Exploration. If you like these videos, please subscribe. I'm, I have more behind this. And uh, if you ever have any questions, love to chat about oil uh, investment opportunities. Now, now's the time to get involved in oil. There's a lot of great opportunities that you would not be able to get involved with had oil prices dropped down to where they were. Anyways, uh, give me a call anytime, 307-622-1645. I'm Sean Pruitt, president of Kingdom Exploration. 
And until next time, thanks.